Join me right now, back on the show, is UFC lightweight Stevie Ray. What's going on, Stevie? What's up, man? First thing is I want to get into is uh, Polaris 11. Over the summer, you know, you went out there. You got a sick submission over Patty Pimblett. You know, talk about that experience because I really enjoyed that performance. Thanks, man. Uh, yeah, I mean, grappling. I enjoy grappling as well. Um, it's, it's sometimes hard when, obviously, you're busy with, with the MMA stuff. Um so yeah, I've, I've done a couple of competitions uh, earlier in the year as well, just trying to stay busy. I prefer it, you know. It, it keeps me more active in between fights because sometimes, you know, I could be waiting a while in between fights, and I, I like to stay active. I feel like I'm, you know, if I'm more active, it keeps my weight down. I'm, I'm away from the junk food, and um, yeah, and just staying motivated, and it keeps you sharp as well. So. Uh, Polaris reached out to me, said, uh, hey, would you be up for the match against uh, Paddy? And I was right away. Of course, I'd be up for it, but I had to obviously go and ask my manager uh, and my coach. And Because, uh, yeah, it was fairly close to, obviously, this fight as well. Um, and, yeah, it all worked out. I mean, I, I feel like I've been training forever, though, the way this fight camp, like, but, but it's all good. That means I started this fight camp in shape because the 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 kind of grappling match was at seventy seven kilos. So I've been I've been pretty much at my fight weight the whole camp, uh, which has been beneficial. I also saw that uh you got some sessions in with uh, Damian Maya. He paid a visit to your gym. How was uh those sessions and uh, did it give you a lot of confidence kind of going into that uh, grappling match? Yeah. It did, to be honest, because, uh, you know, I'm not going to talk shit and stuff, but I managed to get a submission against him. Um, I don't say what submission, but, uh, yeah, I managed... I mean, he was probably playing with me, I don't know. But, I mean, the, the, there was, you know, we were rolling... And I tried, you know, I, I wasn't trying to, you know, expose or anything like that, but I, I had to try my hardest against him, of course. Um and a kind of training aspect, though, and I managed to, you know, I managed to do well. I managed to escape positions, and it was a really good session with it. Um, he was over in Scotland for a seminar, and he's obviously, you know, done a bit of research or whatever. Found out that um, there's another UFC guy, and he asked, he asked if he can come along and just do a training session in my gym. So I wasn't sure if he meant, you know, I, I'll just open up for him, um, and he can do his own thing. So. I was just like, yeah, of course, you can use my gym. Um, and then I asked Mark, one of his training guys, Mark Turner, uh, he was over with him. He's Scottish as well, but he lives in Chicago and trains with Damien. So I just said, you know, you want me to bring some gear? Well, will I bring some uh, training clothes along and get, get a session together? And he says, yeah, just bring some stuff and we'll see. Um, so, yeah, went along. We've done, uh, we done a bit of shadow boxing for the warm-up, a bit of bag work. And then uh, we finished with, I think I did four rounds with him, four or five minute rounds, uh, just grappling. But it was it was good the way we done it. Like, he had to start, so I would go side control on him and he would just try and escape, so just position him. And I had to try and hold him, nothing else, and, and obviously some at him as well. Um, and then as soon as he escaped, we go top to bottom. So I, and we did that for five minutes. And then we did the same again, a whole five minutes, but this time the mount. Um, I would go mount, he would go mount, and then we did our, then I think we done two normal rounds, uh, just rolling. Um, and yeah, I done well, like better than I thought I would do. So give me a bit of confidence because he's like probably the best, best guy in the world on yeah. the ground. And he's a bit bigger than me as well. So yeah. Yeah. Was that before they announced him as the main event for Singapore? Uh, yeah, it was before the announcement. We had kind of spoke a little. Uh, me and Mark had kind of said, like, he had said he thinks he's maybe going to be on the Singapore card. Um, and I had said that I think I told them that, yeah, I've just been matched on. Because I think, I'm not sure if my fight was announced by that point or not, but I obviously knew that that was. Uh, happening as well so yeah it was cool we're both on the same show um got a good wee workout in and yeah it was cool really cool 
yeah it's 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 crazy how things work out sometimes you know when you meet up with other fighters and then next thing you know you're fighting on the same card with them and uh all the way on the other side of the world that's that because it'll be cool you know when when i go over to singapore you know i'll see him there we can get a chat we've already met another little buddy um yeah and then we're both gonna try and smash it get the ones well you you just mentioned that you know you've been training the whole time you know you had those grappling matches you said you're already in shape going into the camp you know what changes do you make when you decide like okay i'm going into a fight camp now not just for grappling uh, so pretty much just to be honest for the grappling match i just did an mma fight camp anyway um <laughs> I, I didn't really i don't even really see my obviously i do fight camps but i don't even really see it as like right now i'm on fight camp i just train the same or similar all the time like i don't really take time off so after a fight you know i'll take a week off two weeks off but and then after that i'm just so let's say you know a few months ago or july july i had no fight august i had no fight but i'm just training like i have a fight anyway just you know more enjoying it enjoying the food but i'm still turning up to every session wrestling jiu-jitsu striking pad work drills strength conditioning um so yeah and then obviously when you get the fight it's like right we need to turn it up a bit now we need to start watching the calories and uh so that's the only difference really um i mean i was still striking still sparring mma um even though even though i had the the grappling match um maybe maybe just focused a little bit more on on the grappling you know i did fifth I did some uh, 15 minute rounds um grappling I did like I remember doing three and three in the row so like 45 minutes of constant rolling uh just to get used to the the 15 minutes and then yeah I mean the the match didn't really hit the mat too much I was a wee bit disappointed in that aspect you know it was like a feeling out process and a bit of stand up kind of wrestling um but yeah, I, f I feel like, you know, I, uh, he could have committed a little bit more, but maybe, I don't know, maybe he felt the power as soon as he was in my, the clinch. And, um, but yeah, I worked through it. I, I tried that flying scissor entry a couple of times and failed it, and then eventually got it. So that was pretty cool as well, the fact that, you know, I got someone that I'd failed a couple of times before that. Coming off you know, a knockout loss, right? There must be a protocol that you have to go with the doctors. You know, did it take some time for you to get back into full contact or, you know, was it just normal? Like the normal time, take it off and you return? Uh, maybe, maybe a little bit extra, like no sperm. Um, I think, I can't remember what it was. Maybe like no spot but i would normally i would normally wouldn't, wouldn't spar anyway uh, unless i've you know i've fought and i've been healthy and my and if my teammates have got a fight or I, i've got to get in and help them so but yeah obviously but uh i can't remember if much of my teammates had fights anyway but that's the only time that you know i'd be straight into kind of hard sparring again um after a fight like if i if i didn't lose by knockout obviously but yeah i just chilled took like a month off sparring or something um still did some uh grappling sparring and just just pretty much watched the contact to the head um i mean i got a ct scan uh straight after the the fight i think that's just like normal protocol got get the head checked and everything was fine um and yeah, just pretty much back to training. It was just one of those things, uh, you know. I, I, straight after, straight after again, you know. Once I'd realised, obviously, yeah, I lost the knockout, and I've watched it back on Fight Pass, and I've kind of seen what's happened. I'm like, I feel like I'm just ready to go again. Can we just do it again? Let's uh, restart and fight. But it's just one of those things. Yeah. Now you're going to Singapore. Is it your first trip to Asia? Yeah, first trip to Singapore. Uh, yeah, I think first flight to Asia. I may be being stupid when I say this, but I've been to Johannesburg. I know that's Africa. Is that is that Asia? I don't even know. 
<laughs> no. <laughs> uh, a completely different place or whatever. Yeah, first time in, in Singapore anyway. It should be good. Uh, there's oh, seven, yeah. seven hours ahead, so I'm going to go a little bit earlier than than normal just to acclimatise and uh, and get used get used to one the weather and get used to the the time zone. That's the main one. The time zone. So you're facing Michael Johnson, man. You go from you know Santos, who is a big name, a guy that's fought a lot of good dudes, beat a lot of good guys, and now you go to Michael Johnson, another big guy in the division, or is actually returning to the division. Was he yeah. the was he the first name offered to you, or did it you know take a little bit of time to get Michael Johnson? Yeah, he's the first name, man. Uh, like it's, I'll fight, I'll fight whoever, I'll fight anybody, I'll fight who, whoever they say. If they said Khabib or, or whoever it is, oh, I'm ready to go. So yeah, Ali said, my manager Ali, uh, he said, you know, we've been offered a fight, uh, Michael Johnson, and um, yeah, like I like the fight. I mean, obviously it's a, uh, if it's probably my, it's probably. Like you were saying, Michael Johnson, a big name. He's probably the biggest name I fought. Mm-hmm. I mean, Santos is just as big and just as good type thing, but he's maybe not as known as Michael Johnson. Yeah. I feel like I feel like with Santos, he had he had all the you know the wins and the the name, and he's beat all the good guys. He's beat Kevin Lee, and you know they're even. I've seen a link recently saying that. He'd be the perfect guy to beat Khabib because he's ground skills and obviously he's got them. But uh, but yeah, he wasn't as known a field to Michael Johnson. So at least uh, yeah, it's another tough fight, but at least I get the, the actual good exposure. Uh, well, I win over Johnson anyway. So yeah, definitely. Well, you know Johnson, <laughs> he took his last four fights were at one forty five. You know he yep. looked pretty depleted going down to featherweight when he fought making those types of cuts you know do you think it takes a toll on your body that you cannot recover from yeah probably i mean I, even me like some people have said to me in the past maybe i should think of featherweight and stuff but i already think it's a pain in the arse to make lightweight like obviously i do it i've done it so many times now, like I, I don't even know the number of how many lightweight fights I've had, but I've done it that much now. It's just my body's used to it. But to cut another ten pounds on top of that, when I'm feeling like shit, um, when I, when I'm at lightweight, you know, it's it's not the biggest of cuts. I, I try and always cut sensible amounts of water for my brain and stuff like that. But um, I don't think, yeah, I'd probably be much bigger and maybe physically better at featherweight than, than lightweight because um but yeah, I just think it would be too much. I'm comfortable. I wouldn't say I'm the smallest or the or the biggest at lightweight and I'll I'm happy just doing that. But yeah, I can imagine Mike Johnson again, he I'd say we're probably similar size actually. Um he doesn't look yeah, he's quite big for a featherweight. He's he's kinda I wouldn't say he's really small he's not small for a lightweight and he's not big either. Which is ideal because most of the guys I've lost to at lightweight are all all been monsters. Um, I think the only one that isn't he, like really big that I've fought recently is Cage and Johnson that I lost the split decision to. But apart from him, I mean Santos, he was tall, awkward, rangy. Um, Felder, obviously a big guy. Uh, even yeah, that Jess was crazy. Like, they were talking about yeah. Felder. He walks around at like 195 or something like that. And I was just like, what? Yeah. How does he do that? <laughs> yeah, that's big, man. That's big. I mean, I, I've walked around at that weight before, but that's just Philly Dominoes. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, like fat, out of shape. Uh, I'm probably I'm in shape. I'm walking around at like maybe 80, low 80s, 83 kilo, whatever that is in pounds. Um, but yeah, uh, it's always good knowing I'm not fighting a total huge guy, like, um, kind of even playing field with a wee bit, uh, in, in terms of physicality, anyway. When you look back at his last couple of fights, Michael Johnson, you know, what have you thought about his performances compared to when he was performing at lightweight? Uh, I've watched some of his fights, to be honest, I've not really... 
focused on the difference between featherweight and lightweight. I've just, you know, I'll watch the fights. I mean, he's a really good fighter. Um, and I, I feel like, you know, I feel like the way he fights and, and, you know, his name, I just feel like this is a really good opportunity for me. I, I believe that I'm... I believe that I'm uh, good enough to be fighting these kind of guys. And, you know, the last fight, yeah. Or the last few fights, I've been unfortunate. Like, if you look at me before, everything was going well before the Felder fight. You know, I was I was uh, getting all that exposure for the UFC and stuff as well, getting the good spots on the cards. And then, obviously, I lost to Felder. I had a couple of rubbish fights after that. The one with split decision with Cajun and... The Jess and Ayari one wasn't the the most uh, best performance for me either, but I feel like I should be fighting top fifteen guys anyway. It's, it's just the right time, the right place, and this is exactly it. Um, Michael Johnson, my big name, he's been number five in the world, I think, at lightweight after they knocked out Dustin Poirier, um, and I just feel like these kind of fights, I feel like I rise to the occasion as well. Um, you know, when I got Joe Lowe's on, another big name, I got the win. I got Ross Pearson, co-main event in, in Belfast. I got the win. And, you know, I'm looking to make it three in a row. Another big name for me. And, yeah, it'll really set me up. It's the last fight on my contract. So, um, yeah, it's like do or die. As always, anyway, every fight's like that. But this, this one, I just... Um, this is my chance to show the world who I am, I'm going to go out there, fight to the death. And if it's my night, then cool. That means I get to beat Michael Johnson, a huge name, new contract. You know, it's in my playing field. I can kind of ask for a top 15 guy, good money, etc., etc. Obviously, I lost. I don't know where that puts me because um, it is a big name. Whether the UFC would re-sign me with a loss, I don't know, but I'm just going to go out there and fight like fuck. Fight. Try and enjoy it. Enjoy Singapore. Enjoy the fight. And, you know, let everybody see what I can really do. One last thing before I let you go. You know, there's many different types of competitors in mixed martial arts. Do you consider yourself uh, a martial artist or a prize fighter at this point in your career? I would say I'm a little bit of both. I definitely started as a fighter. Um, like, I beat a lot of guys that maybe should have beat me. Like, I beat guys that are better than me um, in the gym. And it, it was just, I wanted it more. I'm a different mentality. Um, so I've definitely still got that, that attribute to me where I have no fear. I'll, I'll fight any man anywhere. Whether the maybe I'm a little bit crazy, I would even fight a guy if they had you know a, a machete. I still believe I'd have a way to win because I've got MMA skills and um yeah maybe I'm just a little bit nuts <laughs> and yeah it could be a good thing. So and you see that sometimes in some of my fights, I feel like you know that that type of fighter came out me in round three. Joe was on. I'm like, come on, let's just slug it. Out. Come on, let's see who's Let's swing and just see who's still standing. Um, but then there's a you've got to get the martial arts side of that as well, where you need to be careful. And um, but we'll see, I'm just you know I, I'm I would say I'm skilled and obviously martial arts. I'm also I can fight. Um, and yeah, I've made some adjustments uh, from even the last fight. I feel like I made a few mistakes against Santos. Uh, my feet weren't underneath me. I've, I've overreached. Um, Santos has just timed it perfect. Step back. Uh, my legs weren't, weren't underneath me. Um, and yeah, like he kind of forced me to be like that, though, I felt like. He hit me with some hard body kicks before I, I just started feeling warm. I, I was just starting to feel like, right, I, that's, that's me took a couple of shots, right, let's go now. But I'm starting to feel loose, maybe too loose. Um, and then went in, you know, I had, I had to try and close the distance against him. He had a five-inch reach advantage on me. Um, Andy was a big, tall, rangy guy. And he's just 
timed it perfectly. Johnson, I think he, Johnson's got quite a big reach as well, actually. He's got long arms and stuff, but yeah. he's nowhere near as big as Santos. Um, so, yeah, I feel like it's, even though Johnson's a bigger name, maybe even a better fighter, um, I feel like it's just, you know, every fight's different. Every style, every fight. I, I like this matchup. Um, I believe I can I can beat Johnson on the feet. I believe I can beat him on the on the ground. One thing I, that I'd probably openly admit, he might be faster than me. He's quite fast. He's got fast hands. Um, might be faster than me, but well, he hit harder than me. We'll, we'll soon find out. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll find out. October 26th, UFC on ESPN Plus 20, Singapore. Steven, it's always good to talk to you, man. Uh, it, I enjoy our chats. You know, good luck to you on this fight coming up, you know, and good luck to you on everything that you're doing in your life. Thanks, man. Everybody's tuning in. Should be a good fight.